correlation and regression. This is uh, the topic of this lecture. So what we are going to cover in this uh, chapter, we are going to cover correlation, linear regression, measures of regression and prediction intervals, and multiple regression. So let's start with correlation. So in correlation, we are going to learn about introduction of, to linear correlation, independent and dependent variables, types of correlation that can be correlation coefficient, test the population correlation coefficient using table, performing hypothesis test for a population correlation coefficient, and figure out the difference between correlation and causation. So, what is correlation? It's like a relation between two um, objects, like relationship between two variables. If every object will be represented by variable, then it's going to be a, presentation, a relationship between two variables. The data can be represented by ordered pairs because they are in relationship you know, the, this correlation is taken from life, uh, correlation when a couple is in relationship. That's why they call uh, the data uh, as a um, paired, uh, as a couple in life, right? And then uh, in the statistics, we call paired uh, data, okay? Where X, uh, just like in the graph, first one is independent, X, and the second one is dependent, which is Y. So X we call practically independent. Here it is. Oh, why is it white color? Let me see, I want it yellow one, independent. Or we call explanatory that explained, and the y is dependent, so x depend, the y depend on x, or response, so based on uh, reaction, uh, there, there is, uh, based on action of x, there is a reaction of y, okay? So correlation can be uh, expressed by a scatter plot, because you have x, and y, x is going to be independent variable, and y is going to be dependent. So every point here, or element of scatter plot, is uh, representing x and y. Okay, x is here 5, uh, equal 5, y here equal 2. All right. So that's what we call, it's a graph uh, that is represented by points, okay? And uh, looking at the scatter plot, we can uh, say if scatter plot represent a uh, direct line or a straight line, rather saying, which is correlation, proportional correlation between two uh, variables. So let me see. If I take a straight line, okay, this one is uh, it's gonna be a little bit away, outlier, kind of, yeah. Or uh, the scatter plot. Let me see if we have next coming. Yes, here it is. Scatter plot uh, can be non-linear, which is this one, non-linear. This is uh, linear but negative. See if I can provide line through these dots, it's going to go down. This one is going to be positive. It's, uh, it's growing. So in the first case, in the case of negative uh, linear correlation, we can say uh, as X increasing, Y is decreasing. But in the case of um, positive linear correlation, X, uh, the Y is increasing as X increasing, right? That's why it's positive. 
So here we have no uh, correlation. It's a chaos in the uh, in this one. And the last one is non-linear. See, I would say parabola. Okay. So those are types of correlation. Okay. So here we we want to construct example given data. So uh, of uh, GDP and uh, CO two emission. So we want to build the, uh, the the scatter plot and tell us how CO2 emission depends on growing GDP, okay? What's the relationship? Is it a, a linear correlation? If it's linear, then it's positive or negative, or it's a chaotic, there is no correlation at all. So we need to build so we can see. Here it is, if when we build, we can see that we have positive linear correlation, right? Which means as GDP is growing, emission also growing. Okay? Okay. Now here is another one, constructing a scatter plot using technology. It's about um, the Old Faithful located in Yellowstone National Park. That's a place I would like to go. I haven't been there and uh, I don't live in that state although. Uh, so um, Old Faithful located in Yellowstone National Park is the world the most famous geyser. The duration in minute of several of Old Faith Faith uh, Faithful eruptions and uh, the times in minute until the next eruption are shown in the table. So we need to figure out uh, what correlation is uh, between duration and time, so between eruptions. So this is uh, used uh, stat plot. Um, so this is type of uh, software and the software give us this type of result. So it's a positive linear correlation. The uh, greater the eruption duration, the greater is time between them, these eruptions. Okay. So putting on the um, scatter plot format, we can say what kind of uh, correlation between them. All right. Um, relation, uh, correlation can be measured by coefficient correlation, just like uh, at the, in the case of couple. Um, couple can be so close to each other that everywhere they are together. And I call such couple pair of shoes and I know they are listening and laughing now. Uh, but there, there is a so-so uh, relationship it's a 50-50%, for example, or negative. Uh, they are in relationship, but each of them has own life. I mean, uh, one is going and coming as they please, the other one going and coming. That's a negative relationship, okay? And as time goes by, that type of negative uh, relationship will drive to the ground, which means they will end up with no relationship at all. So... Correlation coefficient, that's a measure of strength and the direction of linear uh, relationship between two variables, strength and direction. That's what shows correlation coefficient. We represent it with letter R, sample correlation, sample correlation coefficient, don't forget. Sample correlation coefficient because a sample always represent a uh, population, okay? And this is this crazy formula is a formula for correlation coefficient for the sample. When x, you know, it's independent variable, y is dependent. I'm not going to make you uh, calculate this, but we are going to use software that will uh, calculate for us and give us the result i just maybe here i'll just go over how it, it's a uh, math part how it's uh, working to calculate 
but uh, I'm not going to make you calculate that. Now, population correlation is represented by rho. So let me write down here for population co uh, correlation coefficient, we use rho. For sample correlation coefficient, we use r. So r represent rho. Okay, whatever r we will uh, get, that will we will apply to rho, meaning to correlation coefficient for population. Okay, so the uh, correlation coefficient is running from negative one to positive one. Negative one, it's here, negative one. That's exactly what I was talking about. Positive, negative, uh, hold on. Positive, negative, uh, and uh, no relation. So this is negative one. There is perfect negative correlation. It just can be uh, might as well people who don't have any um, messy uh, relationship, right? That's a negative correlation, uh, disturbing relationship. They are toxic to each other, excuse my words, but that's perfect way to describe. So zero is where R is equal zero, which means there is no linear relationship at all. So just like two people next to each other and they are not in relationship, it's zero. And one, when they are in perfect relationship, well, that's the couple I call them pair of shoes, that everywhere they are together. That's a, a, a relation uh, that can everybody dream of, right? So this is negative, this is negative one going down, and eventually it's gonna go down to zero. This is chaotic, no relation, and this is perfect. Couldn't be better relation. And this is correlation coefficient that characterize uh, the, corre uh, the correlation, okay? So, linear correlation. So look here, um, negative uh, 0 0.91, why? What does that mean? It's not perfect, but close. Why? Because here we have outside of a straight line, right? So sometimes they disagree. They don't argue, but they disagree. That's what it means if compared to uh, this linear correlation to relationship. Now, this one, 0, 0.88, it's uh, opposite to 0, 0.91. It's a positive relationship. And they also disagree, but overall they are very uh, in a very healthy relationship. The zero ninety one, they are in negative relationship, which means uh, they are uh, everybody is doing what they want. Uh, kind of uh, they are together, but uh, the reality is everybody on its own, and sometimes they argue. That's how I would describe. Uh, R is equal 0 0.42, so it's a very weak positive relationship we call. Why? Because you have so many residuals, right? The, a lot of outliers from that uh, line, so it's very weak. It's positive, but it's very weak. It's, it's just a so-so relationship. And uh, non-linear correlation, that means... Uh, that was a relationship was good, right? And something happened and they got this a point, for example, and it's going down. This is non-linear uh, correlation, which is close to zero, zero point, zero seven. All right, so this is types of linear correlation. So here it's showing how to calculate correlation uh, coefficient. I'll just uh, go over and again this is you can uh, read obviously it's uh, step by step but I will cover here. Um, so let's ex see. Um, find, finding correlation coefficient with the same GDP and CO2 it's the same table. 
let's see what we have this is how we are going to calculate um i would write down rather this formula r is equal so first we have to do what we need to hold on we need to uh, get multiplication x by y this is this one so we multiply x by y and then summarize it and then sum of x sum of y and multiply by each other so let's go back so we have x and y here multiplication x by y and at the end we multiply x y and also we need sum of x let me use different one we use sum of x and then sum of y and uh, we need to get a square a sum of squares these two so i'm just covering the math part if you are not interested you can skip it here it is uh, x squared sum but this is uh, uh, the sum of x squared anyway so they plug all this data and r is coming 0 0.882 so um 0 0.882 suggests a strong positive linear correlation as the gross domestic product increases the carbon dioxide emission also increases right and we so that based on scatter plot also and based on correlation coefficient that also shows the same strong correlation now we are applying same thing to technology here it is what do we have here they used here excel this is the function for excel corel you can use it and uh, use the this is uh, our range of x this is our range of y and you can get the uh, correlation coefficient r okay uh, there is a software mini tab can be used and uh, this is on uh, um, scientific uh, what, uh, st the calculator that has uh, statistics uh, calculation in it and here we have a uh, result where r is equal 9786 this is uh, another uh, correlation coefficient very strong 0 0.979 it's very strong positive correlation negative po correlation would be with negative sign okay so using table we are now we are going to test using table we are going to test a population correlation coefficient rho remember rho i mentioned is a correlation coefficient for population all right so since we don't have that table i'm going to cut uh, clean this so you won't uh, get misled this is for different uh, textbook but uh, it's gonna be uh, in our assignment on my math lab so once the sample correlation coefficient r has been calculated so then we need to determine whether there is enough evidence to decide so there is no escape from uh, uh, the interpretation if enough evidence not enough with the evidence we support we reject so we are going down that path again so uh once we got r then uh, we need to determine whether there is enough evidence to decide that population co correlation coefficient rho is significant at specified level of significance this is how we are going to figure it out if our absolute value of r we are taking absolute value which means if it's negative it's going to be take positive also if it's a greater than our critical value r critical then there is enough evidence hence enough let me see r critical enough evidence here it is enough evidence 
to decide that correlation coefficient rho is significant. Okay, so one more time, if absolute value of correlation uh, at a, a coefficient of, of the sample, right, is greater than critical value, then there is enough evidence to decide that correlation coefficient of rho. So whatever we find for correlation coefficient for sample, we apply to correlation coefficient for population. So we decide that correlation coefficient rho is significant and vice versa. So here is table, table to test population correlation coefficient. This is a table for alpha 1% 1 and alpha 5% significance level. So determine the rho is significant for five pairs of n is equal 5 at the level of significance alpha equals 0 0.01, okay? So alpha is equal 0 0.01, n is equal 5. This is what we need to find uh, from the table correlation coefficient rho. Okay, question mark. So n is equal 5, here it is. Uh, let me take some... Uh, Okay, very light yellow, so I will shade. Oh, it's completely covered, never mind. So I'll just use this blue color, 5, n is equal 5, and alpha is equal 0 0.05. And intercept is 0 0.959, which is strong, positive, correlation right so what and what do we get if our uh, absolute value of r is greater than 0 0.959 then the correlation is significant otherwise there is uh, no enough evidence not enough evidence to conclude that correlation is significant if it's less. Okay, so let me write down absolute value R is less than 0 0.959. Then not enough evidence. Enough evidence for significancy. I'm writing down this way so to be uh, not to uh, use too much space here because uh, I don't have much space. Okay. So here are steps. I'm going to cover these steps so you can see. So using table to test population correlation coefficient. First, we need n for the table. Then we need alpha. Okay, critical value. And we find our critical value there. All right. From the table. Okay. So, if critical value, uh, if R is greater than our critical value, I would recommend to write down this. If R is greater than critical value, then correlation is significant. Otherwise, meaning if R is less than critical value, then there is not enough evidence to support. Okay, correlation uh, and uh, so, uh, that the correlation is significant. It's very important. I would uh, recommend to take a note on this. Okay. Example, using a table to test population coefficient, population correlation coefficient rho. What do we have here? It's, uh, we uh, calculated and we found out, remember, that r is equal 
0 0.979 and alpha is 0 0.05. So I'm not going to count now, uh, the spend time to count. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure on next slide. Ah, it says 25. Okay, never mind. I was joking. 25. It's given here. Okay, so moving to next one. Here is N is 25, alpha 0 0.05. So how much we are getting? N is 25. Alpha 0 0.05, this one. And here it is 0 0.396. There we go, we have it. So our R is 0 0.979 and it's definitely greater than 0 0.396, uh, six, which means at 5% significance level, we can conclude that there is significant linear correlation between duration of old faithful's eruption and time between eruption. Remember the scatter plot? It was a straight line, which means directly proportional. The uh, longer uh, the duration, the longer is the time between eruptions. Now we're going to go through hypothesis test. So test the claim. Hypothesis testing, uh, uh, testing for population correlation coefficient rho. So a hypothesis test can also be used to determine whether sample correlation coefficient r provide enough evidence or not. We can do it through uh, our hypothesis test, okay? Well, let's go and see. An hypothesis test can be one tail or two tail, just like every single hypothesis test. Nothing new. So, uh, we are testing rho, which is uh, just like we were testing uh, at the parameter of population. Here also parameter of population, which is rho, correlation coefficient. If uh, the, and always null hypothesis is gonna have equal sign, so here is a negative correlation, left tail, right? This is a left tail. Uh, significant negative correlation because it's left uh, less than zero. When it equals zero, then we say no significant negative uh, correlation. Here is right tail because it's greater, but because also it's uh, greater than zero, it tells us it's significant positive one and which means no significant positive correlation, complement, right? To tell, we say significant correlation or no significant correlation. Write down, uh, take these notes on this uh, hypothesis uh, testing notation so it, you will know how to uh, use it, uh, how to uh, write down this uh, hypothesis test, and then we can uh, test the claim. Okay, so let's go. We are going to use t-test for correlation coefficient. This is going to be our standardized test. r over sigma r and sigma r. This is uh, our um, uh, standard uh, deviation of r. How far this r is drifted away from average, so r is going to be equal 1 minus r squared, 1 uh, n minus 2, square root, this is minus, okay? So test statistics is r, in, but standardized test statistics is t, it's different. Standardized and test statistics, two different uh, values, just like we were doing uh, in a case of uh, mu when we were testing. Test statistics was mu one minus mu two for two samples and the standardized test statistics was either z-score or t-score based on uh, presence of um, um, standard deviation of the population or a sample size. Okay, and we are going to follow t-distribution tab table with degree of freedom equal n minus two, keep in mind here we are doing n minus two because it's a correlation. 
So we at uh, minus one from one, minus one from one, together it's gonna be n minus two if they are paired, remember? So in this text, uh, only two tail hypothesis tests for uh, rho are considered. We are going to test only two tail hypothesis tests. Let's see, two tail is the most interesting. So step number one here, usually I skip this part, uh, say that you can uh, read it, but this is a little bit uh, different topic, correlation coefficient. So I'll go over step by step and then we solve, start solving problems. So first thing we need to uh, state now an alternative hypothesis. Okay, equal, not equal. And then we need to identify significance level, right? degree of freedom minus two and then we are going to go to through table that is given right we, it will be given in the in my math lab and we go and find critical value just like we do we did uh, in the case of sample testing uh, the testing one sample testing two samples right critical value we would get from alpha okay and then we calculate standardized test statistics. And we are going to get this uh, from uh, StatCrunch. We are going to use it and make a decision. If T in rejection area, then we reject null hypothesis, right? And otherwise we fail to reject. We are going to cover all this and do interpretation. The steps are the same as in uh, all previous topics. It's just um, uh, correlation coefficient. It's a little bit different than um, average of the mean, average of the samples. Okay, example, t-test for correlation coefficient. So we had previously R0.882, and significance level alpha equals 0 0.05. So let's see where we are going with this. Well, okay, let's uh, start from the beginning actually. So now hypothesis for uh, this case, uh, and if it's to tell, it's always gonna be the same thing, right? Because equal sign always we trust, but verify, we trust that uh, rho is equal to zero, co coefficient, correlation coefficient of population, and alternative is not equal for two tails. This is our alpha significance level, and degree of freedom is gonna be n minus two. Our n was 10 from the previous slide, and minus two. So what we are going to do, we need to find out our critical level Critical level is we are going to take our degree of freedom, right? From T score table, we are going to take degree of freedom, alpha, I mean degree of freedom and alpha for two tails. And here we will get uh, how much is our T critical? 2.306 plus minus because we have two tails. So what we find is going to be uh, for one tail. So the other one also will be with opposite sign. Now, next we are going to calculate test statistics. Standardized test statistics. It's going to be 5.294. So we plug the value 0 0.882. Remember that was our R. Here it is, R is equal to 0.882. And then one minus uh, R, let me write down, T is equal R divided by one minus R and divided N minus two. And this is our for formula for test statistics. And the result is 5.294. Okay, when I place this standardized test, um, zero uh, five point two nine four. It's gonna fall to uh, the behind of uh, test at uh, the critical values two point three zero six. 
which means what does that mean? We are going to reject, right? It's falling in the error area. With 5% significance, there is enough. Okay, well, that's a oh, right away decision. So we, uh, the, let me uh, uh, work out slowly. So since uh, R is greater than uh, T critical, that's mean we, uh, we reject null hypothesis, right? If we reject null hypothesis, we fail to reject uh, alternative hypothesis. If we fail to reject, that means we are using the verbiage support, right? And there is enough evidence. So at 5% level of significance, there is enough evidence to conclude that significance level uh, correlation between uh, to conclude that there is significant linear, so we support or significant linear correlation between gross domestic product and carbon dioxide. So you're always going to go through uh, null hypothesis and then draw conclusion about alternative hypothesis. Next topic we are going to cover linear regression. So, what are objective? Find the equation of linear regression line. Lin uh, regression line. Hold on. Yeah. And predict y value using regression equation. So, regression line. After verifying that linear correlation between two variables is significant. Next, we need to determine the equation of the line that best model, that is the best model for the data regression line. So practically regression line is representing the model, right, for uh, linear correlation. As we build in the scatter plot, so our, this line that we provide in the middle will tell us uh, th that this is regression line and uh, how perfect is this uh, correlation? And x is independent value and y is dependent, as always. Residual. So here we are going to uh, spend a little bit time, so please pay attention. Okay. What do we have here? This gray point, let me see. If I can pick up gray points. It doesn't come up, so I could, ah, here we go. This is gray point, let me, I need gray points. So these gray points that you see here, I am uh, highlighting, making them bigger. Those are predicted value, write down. This is predicted value, these gray ones. Okay? Next, the blue points we have, those are observed value. Those are observed value, okay? This, those are real uh, scatter plot points, results. So when we have, let's say, points like that, okay, and uh, we are going to provide the line in the middle. So, why is it so thick? Oh, so this point here is going to be predicted one. And uh, the blue ones, that uh, the real points, are going to be our observed one, real ones, okay? So, the difference between observed, here it is, observed value minus predicted value, it's going to give us residual, di, okay? The difference between the observed y value and predicted y value for given x on the line. Well, of course, x is going to be the same. Okay. 
they are on the vertical line, it's going to be same x. So, and here is also on the same line, it's going to be for same x, okay? So, observed minus predicted value, it's going to be our residual, meaning our error. So, regression line. Regression line we call as a, as a line of best fit model for correlation. The line for which the sum of squares of the residual residual is minimum, which means that if the line where errors, the ones, the true uh, scattered plot points that are drifted away from perfect line, the, uh, the, the summation of this uh, residual is the minimum. The less, the better is the fit, right? So equation of regression line, we call as a, remember MX plus B format of um, linear equation, slope and intercept, we are going to deal with slope and intercept, MX plus B. This is our predicted Y, value okay m is slope you already know i don't even need to mention it you know this from algebra and b is our intercept so here is example where uh, algebra is used in statistics higher level course okay the equation of regression line is this, we already know, where uh, slope is uh, calculated like this uh, crazy formula. And uh, intercept B is equal from here. If Y bar is a high hat, we call this hat actually, MX plus B, then b is going to be equal i'm throwing mx on this side with negative sign and get y hat minus mx right here it is and uh, the rest is uh, the formula how to calculate all right so y bar here this y bar here it's a mean of y values x bar is a mean of x values okay and the regression line always passes through the point. We always take the average, okay? Because we can't take uh, out uh, liars in any topic uh, in statistics, right? We always take average. Nobody is, uh, uh, if we test out liars, it's going to be testing for um, error, right? But we usually focus on average. The same thing here. The average uh, is going to be the regression always going to pass through a point X bar, Y bar. So meaning coordinate of average point. Okay. So we are going to uh, work with the same um, problem, finding the equation. Here is going through every single calculation. You can uh, do it if you have interest. It's up to you. Okay. So once we calculate everything, they calculated M. Calculated B, given all data. And the regression line is equal. Equation of regression line is equal. Y is equal slope. 196.152 x and plus intercept which is 102.289 all this uh, to get results all of all this we are going to use that crunch otherwise i could put in uh, excel uh, that's uh, in excel it's not a big deal it's easy can be done but uh, since we need to test and everything so i just put on start Next, so it's practically drawing this graph, 196, 152 X plus 102 to 89. Let's see, this has to be um, our 
B, which is intercept 100, how much? 102.289, 102.289. So this line that you have here, let me clean this, it's, you see this uh, kind of, that's mean it's cutting here, doesn't show all values, okay? Because here it's starting from zero and 200 all of a sudden, that's why. So this point starting, we always start with intercept, remember? Uh, and then building the points that graph, slope and intercept, remember? So, and we get this line using slope and line, but uh, I'm not showing you now how we did because we have decimal notation. So you have to represent this uh, uh, 196 and 152 over uh, 1000, convert it and so on, but this is gonna be whatever number we get in denominator, it's gonna be running horizontal if you don't remember whatever number we get in numerator, it's gonna run vertically. And this is gonna be your uh, slope. Okay, the result is we are getting this uh, line. So now using technologies for same thing, uh, we're going to use that crunch, but for Excel, the slope is, uh, you can use in Excel, whoever is interested, we are going to use index, and the uh, line east. So this is known Y, so you are going to place Y here. here. Here you are going to place axis. And uh, here, this one, I don't remember what was that parameter. So the result is gonna be 12.48094. Uh, and the, for intercept, you are doing the same thing, index, and here, ah, okay. Since it's the same function, so I figured that so for slope, you put one, so the formula would understand that it's a slope. And for intercept, you put two, so it would understand it's a intercept. How did I figure? Because everything is the same. Index, line, uh, known y's, known x's, same thing. But here is one, here is two, and one is slope, one is intercept. So it's not difficult to figure out. And we are getting uh, y bar is equal 12.481, blah, blah, blah. This is slope, this is intercept, okay? And here it is, uh, this uh, 8384 statistics calculator. Or you can use mini bar if you want, doesn't matter. Uh, we are going to use um, StatCrunch, which is in my math lab. So now we're gonna see predicting value, y value, using regression equations. The regression equation for gross domestic product, uh, we already know that is equal, let me see, y bar is equal uh, 196, 152, and uh, so forth, plus 102, 289. So we are going to use this equation to predict the expected. So it's forecasting, forecast, predicted, expected uh, carbon dioxide emission. Okay, let me clean this because we are not going to recall from anything, anything. So X and, half, uh, X and Y have significant linear correlation. So. We are going to test X is equal one and two trillion dollars, uh, the two trillion dollars, two and a half trillion dollars. Let's see what we are going to get. So for one and two trillion dollars, we plug, this is X, we are plugging here. It's an X and we get result. Oops, we clean here. So, and plugging here is an X and we get this much, okay. And then uh, for two trillion plugging here and um, plugging for two and a half trillion and the result we get, this result is predicted value. 
or expected value. This and this, expected value, okay? So prediction values are meaningful only for X values in or close to the range of data. Obviously, you can take uh, uh, points on scatter plot that is absolutely outlier and has nothing to do far away from the, uh, the where scatter plot points are uh, concentrated and use it as a, a prediction. It's not going to happen. So you have to uh, get the ones that are uh, around the observed uh, observed values of x, right? That are a lot around, let's say, straight line. Be it positive, be it negative, right? Okay. So we covered the equation of regression line and predicted value.